guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another Rate the Transfer Rumor video. Delighted to welcome Daz in his, uh, I have to say, it's a nice new Bowles jersey, Daz, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah, I'm I'm modelling it here today for Bowles. Um, it's actually really good. I think it's the best jersey we've really released in 10 years, if I do say so myself. A nice touch to it as well is um, That's brilliant. have Mono's name on it. So yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. Um, it's really, really good. It's a nice tribute to a club legend. So it's a beautiful jersey and I'm very happy with it. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll get into the rumours anyway, five of them today. I'm going to start off with Mikey Rowe of Galway United. Rumour to be moving to Wexford FC. Now, Wexford made a few good signings, like the likes of Eaton Boyle has gone there as well. But Mikey was a bit part player with Galway last year. He actually scored some goals in the playoffs, but he only started 13 times under John Caulfield last season. So it's hard to see how, you know, he gets more games at Galway next season. He is a good player. He has an eye for a goal. And I think... Uh, if Wexford were to get him, it'd be a good move for him and a good move for Wexford, I think, wouldn't it? I think, um, firstly, <laughs> Wexford seemed to have a bit more money this year than last year with players brought in. I've been a bit surprised by. Yeah. If you had said this rumour to me, I don't know, a few months ago, I'd be like, yeah, that definitely won't happen. But, you know, Ethan Boyle is a statement made. Like, you know, bringing in a player of his experience, his calibre, that's unbelievable for a club like them. No respect to them. Like, that's a really top sign for them. And, it's shown to have some ambition and to have a budget to work with this season, which is great for Wexford. It's great to have a club like them having a budget and coming up. Um, I would say there would be something in this rumour, based on the fact that Eden Boyle signed, because he obviously came the whole way from a Donegal club. It doesn't necessarily mean that he lives there, because obviously he could live in wherever and just play for them. But Galway, obviously, to Wexford is quite a distance as well. So geographically, you'd be looking at that. But the fact that Boyle hadn't moved... It shows that money shows his ambition to go over players, and he's obviously, like you said, been in and out of the team at Galway. Probably would start at Wexford. They've lost a quite a chunk of their team, and probably will continue to lose their team. They're probably have a completely Con different. Just to throw it out there, Connor Davis went to Bray from Wexford. Yeah, there, there's yeah, a striker exactly. down as well. Like you know, there are striker, there are striker downs that they need. They're revived to be filled. Um, I'm sure you know from the season he had with Galway, he did okay, and if he could get a game every week, you would really like to see why. I could do so. I put it as six key. Um, I put yeah. I'd say it would happen. Um, yeah, I put it as six. I think it'd be a good sign for Wexford, and it'd be good for him to get some fo football and be first team. You know, first name in a team sheet every week. Mm. Sticking with Wexford, and this is one as well. And this would be a super sign for a club like Wexford as well. Connor Levinson linked with a move to oh. Wexford. Now you have to bear in mind Levinson played twenty one times. Started, sorry. 21 times in the league for Bohemians last season. That'd be some coup for Wexford, let's see, in the first division if he was to go there, wouldn't it? Conor Levickson to Wexford. I'll meet you think expect that one now. Wow. Um, that would be an absolute coup and a half for them to, to get him. I think, I look, I wasn't really his biggest fan at Bowes. I thought he was okay for us, but I just, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't a terrific the level absolute. of where Wexford are in the first division. Yeah, yeah for, for the level where they're at and for Division 1, he would be a standout player for them. He'd be someone who would really get that midfield going, string a few passes together and be defensively really good for them. Um, and obviously Wexford's not too far away from Dublin either. So, and you know, he's not that old. He's quite young and he's got a lot of experience from 24, his age. 24, isn't he? 20, yeah, 23, 24. So, mm, yeah. 24. God, that'd be, a really, that'd be a really good sign for them. I'm actually going to put this as a seven. I'm starting, you know, Wexford, they're starting to, there wouldn't be a team you would have heard a few years ago saying, Wexford link with this player, Wexford link with that player. You, you'd never hear of it. And now mm. they're being linked with a lot of players. So, yeah, I put it as a seven. I would like to see him go there. I, I would like to see test himself there and, you know, cement himself in a team and try and come up with them. I'd love to see Wexford in the playoffs, see what they can do. Mm, seven, I'd like him to go there and see, see what he can do. I think he'd be a great sign for them. Mm, signs like that like they would be in contention for the playoffs that's for sure Thomas Alua who scored 11 league goals last season for Athlone Town in a struggling enough team um, very powerful player he was on Bowes books before yeah. Shamrock Rovers books many, and that as well but a very powerful player still only young as well 21 years of age strong as I said powerful has a good finish on him can drift wide is a striker though linked with a move to Waterford FC does like that could be a good one for Waterford, you know, the way they play and they play good attack and football and it would be a good move for Thomas Alua as well, I think, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, Thomas Alua is a player that 
I would know I would know of. He's been at Bowes, but it was quite a while ago. He was yeah. a very young player at Bowes. He didn't set the world alight. He, I remember him in the friendly against Dundalk, and I said, oh, we have a player here, but I don't really think that works. It doesn't work out for him at Bowes, and he left. 11 goals in Division 1, obviously starting a lot of games. Powerful, strong, fast, pacey. You know, a better finish. He's obviously developed quite a lot more than what he was at when he was at Bowes. So, you know, obviously a Division 1 club, Waterford, and he got 11 goals and struggling at low on team yeah. with no experience around him. The players would be poor enough in the league. Going to a team of Waterford with his attacking players, good players in the league, you know, obviously finishing the playoffs, lost out to, you know, getting yeah. up there in the Premier League. That'd be a great signing, I think, for Waterford. I think it'd be good for Alua as well on a personal level, get into a team where they're feeding the ball and he could do something with well, it. Club as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it'd be great. And the way Waterford, you know, pressing their energy and like how fast they move and all that, the way they like the wingers and pacey strikers would suit. His game, I see Waterford. I I put this as an eight. I could really see this one happening. I think it'd be a great move for himself. You know, first team football, full time contract. I would say in a full time club, it'd be a great move for everyone. And it's practical and realistic. So, I put as an eight. I think it'd be a great sign for them. And also, I think that rumor could be on the back of this rumor. If you know what I mean, it links in a way. <laughs> Junior linked with, of Waterford links with a move to Bohemians. Of course, twenty two yeah. years of age. 12 goals in the league last season, 30 appearances, but he's not just a goal scorer. He has very, very good feet. He's very tricky. He's very creative and he can beat players centrally. Um, even though he plays on the right, he kind of tends to come in a bit and, you know, he's got great skill set. Um, now, Bowles would have to pay a fee here because he's under contract, but if Bowles were to go and do that, it'd be a fairly decent statement, wouldn't it? Because, you know, they haven't been making those type of signings really, have they? No, we haven't been. And look, Bowes this year, and you know we're going to struggle as well as we did last year to get players in because no European football. Obviously, that's going to be a big factor. But then the club going full time, having a great training facility, a new manager, and all that, a new team being formed is attractive to a player. I think. Obviously, these players be looking to go to teams in Europe who wouldn't be. So we're going to get the best of the rest unless you spend a lot of money, which you don't see us necessarily doing. But if we're going to pay a fee, um. You know, <laughs> that kind of does span around the works. We don't do that. Bowes don't only do that, let alone any team in the league. It's not it's not common in the league to do Although that. It's, co- it's, starting, it's starting to be a bit more common, though, isn't it? To be fair, clubs are starting to pay fees, which is a kind of a good thing in a way. It is. It's a good thing for the league because we're keeping yeah. our players in the league. and Money going know, around the league, yeah. Teams are getting money and all. and you know, It's good. It's good for the players. It's good for the league. It's good for the teams. Um, I'm not sure, I'm sure what kind of a figure we'd put on this. Like, how many thousand will we be talking? That's the question you'd be asking. Um, it's very it's hard. Waterford, to I suppose, yeah. It does. It does. And Waterford, obviously, necessarily don't really need money because of the background that they have, realistically, you know. It's hard to put a figure on it, you know, thinking of it that way. The fact that we'd have to pay a fee would pull me back from putting to a seven or an eight to a six. Mm. I don't really think Bulls will pay a fee. I just don't think we would. So... You know, if we were going to get him for free at a quarter two seven or an eight, a young player, a good few goals, why not? But a fee, I'm not sure now with a fee. So I put as a six. He's a player I would like to see come to balls, but I'd be hoping that we'd be aspiring to get well established players in the Premier League to our team if possible. It's very hard to do, obviously, with the factors that play, but something I'd like to see. But I put as a six, as I said, just with the fee and all that. So, wow, yeah, yeah he'd be a good player. He'd be definitely welcome at Daily Mill Park anyway. Now, finally, and it's a very bold team to kind of show today, actually, but uh, James Akintunde, who's just left Derry, oh. a, move, a move to Bohemians there as well. Obviously, strong, strong striker, good player, can hold with the ball. Probably doesn't score enough goals, if I'm honest with you, but he, all his other facets are good. But he only managed to make 14 starts for Derry last season, so um, obviously uh, him leaving the club while he was out of contract uh, wasn't a surprise, but linked with a move to Bohemians as well. Yeah, and what I will say too is, correct me if I'm wrong with someone in the comments, but I do believe Declan Levine brought him to the League of Ireland. He did, he uh, brought him to Derry, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, he brought him to Derry, so... <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm pretty happy about this one. I, I would really like if we sign him. I think he'd definitely get in at balls. He'd probably start. We obviously don't know too much about Aflabi at this level, you know, the injuries that he's had. Then there's junior left, and we know what McDade can do by now. So I think he'd get in based on them strikers. He could play anywhere up front, really. He suits balls, how we play and all that. He's strong, he's powerful. He, you know, he works hard for the team. He's 
a workhorse. He's a powerful player. Something that the fans love, something that Bowes love. And yeah, his work rate is top notch yeah. as well, so you, you won't let you in that sense. Yeah, and obviously, you know, the manager knows him as a player. He brought him in, he, he must trust him because he did play in quite a lot when he was at Terry. Mm-hmm. I would put it as an eight. I think it just fits Bowes. It fits him to move to Bowes. He can he play every week. Declan Devine knows him well. I think he'd fit in well at the team. And we need players. We need attacking players as well. And I want players to come to Bowes that have played in the Premier Division rather than just going for Division 1 players. It just fits and it's realistic. I'd put it as an eight. I'd be pretty confident this would happen. And, you know, especially Declan Devine, haven't said last season, I've already spoken to 14 players. <laughs> Could he have been one of them back then? Possibly. So I'd put it quite high. I'd put it as an eight. I'd like to see it happen and hopefully it gets done. Brilliant stuff, Daz. Guys, let us know in the comments if you're a Bowes fan, Waterford fan and Wexford fan in particular because there's a lot of news in those clubs there, isn't there, as a Bowes? What you think? Maybe give us a rating. Um, give us your opinion. Basically, subscribe if you haven't. Hit your bell notification button. And thanks for watching, Daz. Top notch, brilliant. Always pleasure, Keith. Thank you.